Welcome to Lesson 58. This is another exercise tutorial. And by popular request, this is also going to be another example in metric format. From the Metric tab of the New File window, let's select the standard part document in millimeters and click OK. Sketch 1 is active. I'll begin by creating two lines. Let's snap the first point to the origin point. Drag your mouse until you see the horizontal relation glyph. At that point, let's enter a distance of 40 millimeters and press Enter. The next line will be 40 millimeters, tab, at 135 degrees. Press Enter. And press Escape to exit the tool. Next, I'll create a circle here. I'll snap the center point to the origin point. The diameter, let's make 20 millimeters and press Enter. Now let's activate the Copy command. Select our circle. The base point is going to be the center of the circle. And let's move it to this point. We'll snap it right here and click Done. Now let's activate the Offset tool. Select our line, drop the offset about here, and select the line again and drop it on the other side about here. Let's apply a tangent constraint now. I'll select the line and the circle. Select this line and the circle. Let's place another circle in our sketch. For the diameter, 10 millimeters, and press Enter to accept. Let's press Escape to exit the circle command. Now let's select these two lines and delete them. Now I'm going to create a second circle that's 20 millimeters to the right along the X axis. Let's use the Copy tool. First, select the circle. The base point is going to be the center of my circle. Now let's check the Precise Input option to help find my destination point. Here's the Precise Input toolbar. We're going to type in our X and Y values. 20, tab over to the Y field, 0 here. Now press Enter, and Done. Let's close the Precise Input Toolbar. In order to activate the Precise Input Tool, just expand the Draw Panels menu flyout. The reason it's grayed out right now is because I don't have any of the drawing tools active. Let me activate the Line Tool, and now the Precise Input option is available. Let's press Escape to exit the Line command. By the way, generally speaking, if you want to find a tool but you're not sure where it's at, just click on the Inventor button and use the Search field that appears here. I'll just type the first four letters of the word, let's say P-R-E-C, and Inventor shows us the precise input tool in two different places. It's on the 3D Sketch tab on the Draw panel, and it's also on the Sketch tab, that's the 2D Sketch tab, on the Draw panel. So this is an easy and quick way to locate tools. Let's click outside to collapse the search results. OK, let's activate the Rectangle tool. I'm going to snap to this point and this point for the second corner of the rectangle. By the way, if you're not really sure where you're snapping, you can always take a look at the coordinates. 20 millimeters in the X direction and 10 millimeters in the positive Y direction. OK, let's activate the Trim command now and do some trimming. Before we move along, we'd better stop and apply some dimensions and relations. Let's take a look at the status bar. As you see, we do need 12 dimensions. By the way, people ask me from time to time, do I really need to make the sketch fully constrained before I make a solid? Well, the answer is, you know, not really. Inventor will let you work with unconstrained sketches. However, applying dimensions and constraints to your sketch is a good practice. And basically, it'll save you a lot of hassle later on. Let's say, for example, you accidentally move some geometry while you're sketching. And then later on in your project, you find a problem and you need to do a forensic deconstruction. If your model is pretty complex, that can be really time consuming. If only you had applied some dimensions and constraints while you were sketching, you'd have saved all that time. 
So that's why it's a good practice whenever you can to apply as many dimensions and relations as you can before you start working with the solid model. It's also a good idea to apply dimensions and constraints during the process of sketching rather than waiting until you're finished your sketch and then trying to figure out where you need the dimensions and constraints at the end of that process. Okay, let's get to work. I'm going to activate the Auto Dimension tool. Let's uncheck Dimensions. We'll leave Constraints checked. Let's click Apply. Four are still needed. Let's click Done. A reminder, in case you've forgotten, you can display the constraints by pressing F8 on your keyboard, and you hide them by pressing F9. Now if you press F8 or F9 and nothing happens, it's because a tool is active. Let me show you what I mean. I've activated the Line tool. Now I press F8, but nothing happens. Let me press Escape on my keyboard to close the tool, and press F8 again. And here are my constraints. F9 to hide them. OK, let's activate the Dimension command. We'll drop it about here. OK. Let's place a second dimension here. Right click, select an align dimension. Drop it about here. Let's accept the default value. Now I'll select this point and this point and drop my dimension up here. Accept the default value. Status bar tells me I still need one more dimension. We already know that to figure out what's missing, I can simply grab and drag my geometry around. Let's escape to exit this tool. I'll grab this point and try to move it. I'm not able to, it is fully constrained. Let's try to do the same thing over here. And now we know we need to apply an angular dimension. Let's undo that move. Another way to find out which dimension you need is via the Auto Dimension tool. Let's uncheck Constraints. Now in case I don't have constraints in some places, I don't want Inventor to apply them automatically. We'll leave Dimensions checked and click Apply. And as you see, Inventor applied the angular dimension I needed. However, that's not the best way to apply this dimension. Let's undo that. So the fact is, we do need an angular dimension. Let's place it manually. We'll select these two lines and place the dimension about here. Now our sketch is fully constrained. Let's click Finish Sketch. And we're on the Model tab. Activate the Extrude command. We'll select a region. The extrusion depth, let's say 2 millimeters. We can change the extrusion direction if we need to. And let's click OK. Now let's insert a sketch on the top face. Right click, New Sketch. We'll begin by activating the Offset command. And actually, I did forget to create a hole on the other side. So we're going to need to go ahead and fix that. Let's click Finish Sketch. Let's right click on Extrusion 1. Scroll down to Delete. Let's uncheck Consumed Sketches and Features and click OK. Now let's double click on Sketch 1. Activate the Circle command. We'll snap to the center of this arc, 10 millimeter diameter. Press Enter and Escape to exit the Circle tool. Our sketch is fully constrained. Let's click Finish Sketch and back to the Extrude command. Select our profile. 2 mm extrusion is good. OK. OK, let's continue where we left off. Right click, New Sketch. Activate the Offset Entities tool. And let's create our offsets. Now let's apply dimensions. This distance will be 3 mm. This will have a radius of 7.5 millimeters. And let's give this circle a diameter of 15 millimeters. Activate the Trim Entities tool. And let's get to work.
Okay, let's apply a fillet now. Radius of 2 millimeters. Select the geometry to fillet. And let's close the 2D fillet command. We do need a few more dimensions now. We'll activate the dimension command. Let's accept the default value. Here as well. And last one, accept the default value also. Our sketch is fully constrained. Let's activate the extrude command now. Select the profile to extrude. Let's use the cut option. Notice Inventor automatically changed the direction. Depth will be one millimeter and click OK. Next, let's apply a fillet. Radius, let's try one millimeter. And let's use the loop mode. As I mouse over my model, the loop preview appears. Let me select this edge, and this one, lastly this one. Let's click OK. And actually, let's make our radius a little bit smaller. Double click, make it 0.75 millimeters, and click OK. Lastly here, since we only created one half of our model, we need to apply the mirror command. Let's use the mirror solid method. Our solid is automatically pre-selected. Now let's select the mirror plane. I can select the XY plane, or I can hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button or the wheel, and this lets me orbit my model. I'm going to select this face here. Click OK. And here is our completed model. Go ahead and save your work, and we'll see you back in a moment. This concludes Lesson 58.